exhausted but uplifted after weeks of fighting. These men are celebrating after advancing closer to the capital. The fighters are loyal to the internationally recognized government. They were forced out of Tripoli last year by a rival administration. We are supporting the Libyan army. Our position here is very close to the coast, which we will advance on soon. And this is General Omar Tantouche, the man in charge here. In many ways, he reflects the complex picture in Libya. Once a trusted Gaddafi loyalist, he fought against the revolution. Having spent four years in prison, he is now back on the battlefield. The army say they need his expertise. But the rival government in Tripoli say the growing use of former regime figures confirms that a counter-revolution is underway. We are fighting Libya at dawn. They're destroying Libya for religious reasons, damaging houses and forcing people to flee. There are no plans to move into Tripoli, but the fighters' presence here will put pressure on their rivals. From this point, we are just eight kilometers to Tripoli International Airport. This is all part of a push to put themselves and the army in a position to start an attack on the capital. Last year, as Libya dawned took control of these areas and Tripoli, there have been claims that they attack anyone who opposed them. This man had his house demolished. If we don't fight Libya Dawn, then our sons will. And if our sons don't fight them, then our women and our elderly will attack them. We will expel them from this country. Alongside this ongoing violence is the continued threat of Islamic State around the capital. Just a few kilometers away, this shrine was destroyed by IS. The fighting here represents just a small portion of the country. As the conflict continues, it becomes more complicated, and Libya slips deeper into crisis. Firas Kidani, BBC News, south of Tripoli.